All right, so today we're going to be doing some integrals involving trigonometric functions. And um, we're going to take some fairly complex trigonometric functions, and we're going to try to make them simpler using trigonometric identities. Okay, and the main identities that we're going to be uh, using are, um, are these that I have in this table. And, you know, the first one is just the Pythagorean identity, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. Okay, but... Um, we can we can take that uh, identity and we can rearrange it into uh, either one of these two forms. You know, we can sub and and then we can make substitutions. So we can turn a um, a sine function, something sine, something involving sine, and make it into cosine. Or we can take a cosine function and turn it into sine using the Pythagorean identity. Um, this next one is is a, a double angle formula, right? It's the sine of two theta. Um, but what it allows us to do is take the product of the sine and cosine and actually turn it into just a sine function that we can deal with. And then um, the last set here, these are all double angle identities involving cosine. And um, and um, there's actually, you know, this is really all the same. These are, these are really all the same um, formulas, just um, rearranged in different ways with different substitutions. So... Um, but what we're going to be using for the most part is a, um, a uh, rearrangement of the double angle formula. And you can see what it, what it allows us to do is take the square of the sine and turn it into um, just a cosine, right? So sometimes these are called the power reducing formulas. Um, they're also related to the half angle formulas because if I took, um, if I said two theta, equals alpha, then, you know, essentially the sine of one half alpha is equal to, uh, or so sine squared of one half alpha is equal to um, something involving the cosine of alpha. So um, some, you may have learned these identities as a half angle, half angle identities, but they may have looked a little different. They're also called, like I said, the power reducing formulas because we're taking the square and reducing the power, um, which is helpful when we're doing um, when we're doing integrals, because it's easier to take a the integral of, of just a cosine function than it is a squared, a cosine squared or a sine squared function. So let's dive in and see how these are used. Now the first set of um, examples I'm going to do involve odd powers of sine or cosine. And the idea when you have a when you have an odd power of a sine or cosine function is you want to split it up. Okay, so um, you have an odd function and you're going to split it into an even power of a function and um, times, um, you know, one uh, something to the power of one. Um, and then use the Pythagorean identity and substitution. So let's just dive in and do it because I think it would make more sense to see it done than <laughs> have me explain it. So, all right, so we're going to take this sine cubed. So we have an odd power of sine. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, uh, break this up into sine squared of x times sine of x. Okay, right? That's still sine cubed, the x. But what that allows me to do is turn the sine squared into 1, oops, 1 minus cosine squared of x times sine of x. Okay? And you might now see where we're going with this. We can now do a substitution because I know that the derivative of cosine is negative sine. And since I have, <laughs> uh, I have a sine and a cosine involved here, I can use substitution. So let's do that. Let's say that w is equal to cosine of x, okay, which means dw is equal to negative sine of x dx. Now, what I have is sine x dx, right? I have sine x dx, not negative sine x dx. So I'm going to replace sine x dx with a negative dw. All right, so that's equal to sine x dx. Okay, so now if I do that, what I have is I'm going to have um, 1 minus, parentheses around that, w squared, right? And, um, and then the sine x dx gets replaced with dw. Okay. Now that's just polynomial. Oops, I forgot my negative sign, right? It's, it's actually negative dw, so I'm going to put my negative sign out here. Okay, so um, now it's just a polynomial, which is easy to um, integrate. So if I integrate that, um, I'm going to hang on to my negative sign, 
and I integrate 1 and I get w. I integrate w squared and I'm going to get 1 third w cubed plus c. Okay, and now I just need to um, replace w and get my final answer. So I'm going to have a, a negative cosine of x. Right? I'm going to kind of distribute this negative sign. And, um, and then I'm going to have plus one third uh, cosine cubed of x plus c. Okay, so and that's my final answer. So I'll put a little box around it just to make it clear that that's my final answer. All right, so that's really the idea involved here is just um, breaking because all of our, you know, you can see, I look back up at these identities. I have a lot of sine squareds and sine cosine squareds <laughs> or cosine squareds um, involved. And so it's easy, you know, um, it's easier to work with even powers of, of a um, trig function than it is odd power. So to break off one of the one piece of the odd power and you're left as an even power. So, um, so that's example one. Um, why don't you take a look at this one, the next one. Um, again, we've got an, now we have an even power and an odd power, but remember, if you've got an odd power involved, break off one of those, uh, <laughs> one, like here we got cosine to the fifth, break off one of those cosines and then leave you with cosine to the fourth and, and then you can apply some identities. So give that one a go, just to give it a try and I'll, I'll meet you in the next video and I'll give you the solution.